Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Acer Aspire 3. This is the A315-23 series computer. I'm gonna take you on a little teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to open up the computer, get inside of it, and how to access many of the main components in there once you're in. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip it over to access our bottom case screws. We're gonna take off all the screws on our bottom case. You have these three along this edge, these three along the opposite edge, these two here, these two here, and that one screw there. We're gonna take all those screws out. As a side point, guys, this right here is your battery reset pinhole. What you would do is you would press that with a paper clip or other sharp, small object. It would reset your battery. You'd let it sit for 30 seconds off, uh, and that can help if you're having trouble starting your computer or charging your battery. After the screws have been removed, I'm gonna take my small flat pry tool. I'm gonna to go around the seam and pry up the bottom case from the rest of the computer. If you guys are watching me get in here, you'll notice this is actually very difficult for me to take off. I was concerned for a little while there that there was more screws, but there's not. I had to get my uh, larger pry tool out and I've really got to get it under there and then really crank it sideways to get this bottom case off. It does come off. You don't need to take out more screws, but it was kind of a pain in the butt. Once you have your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Uh, for those of you that need the battery information, this is an Acer model number AP16M5J. This is a 7.7 .7 volt battery, 37 watt hour. I will have that information below in the description if you wanna search for your own battery replacement. Uh, however, I will also have a link above also below in the description. It'll give you a list of all the replacement parts for this computer as well as the tools and supplies that I use to get into it. So this battery is really easy to operate. As you can see, there's no additional screws in here. It's just plugged into the motherboard. So I'm gonna peel back this tape that's holding it to some inside components there. Just peel that back. There's some more black tape here that's over the actual battery plug. Be careful, but I'm gonna peel that back or actually I'll just remove it. I'll just make sure to remember to put it back on after. And this battery plug is kind of nice because I don't have to pull on the wires. It's got a grip on either side. So I can use my pry tool or your fingernails and push on this side, push on this side, and that battery plug comes right out. So that's fairly easy to get that battery out. Now that the battery has been removed or at least unplugged, it's safe to proceed deeper into the computer. Your solid state drive is right here. It's an M.2 port right there. It's a single screw that holds it down. So I can undo that single screw. And the solid state drive releases and then I can pull it out of that port right there. So this solid state drive, guys, as mentioned, it's an M.2 port, uh, NVMe. This supports Gen 4 solid state drives. Uh, and this one that came with the computer stock is a 256 gigabyte, so it's kind of small. Uh, so I will have below in the description in that link I told you about, I'll try to have a 500 gigabyte one, a uh, terabyte one, uh, depending on what kind of upgrade you guys are looking to do for this solid state drive. Keep in mind, if you are installing a new solid state drive, it's most likely not gonna have an operating system on it. So you're gonna need to install one on it in order to use a computer. I will have two links below in the description. There'll be one showing you how to install Windows 10, if that's the operating system you wanna use. I'll have another link showing you how to install Windows 11. The RAM is right here. You have a single port for your RAM. The way that RAM works is there's two metal spring-loaded arms on either side. You pry those apart away from the RAM stick and the RAM stick will release. Uh, oftentimes it'll pop up by itself, but then you can slide it out of the port like that. And to put the RAM back in, you'll notice there's a long end and a short end, so you can only get this RAM stick in one way. You can't put it in upside down. You put the RAM stick back in, make sure it's flush, make sure, sure the gold is nice and straight. You snap that back in by pressing it down and it secures in place. Now the RAM, this was DDR4 RAM and there was an eight gigabyte stick. So I looked at what kind of upgrades you can do with this RAM, but you can't really do that much. There's four gigabytes of RAM in the motherboard and then eight gigabytes here making a total of 12 gigabytes. 
but unfortunately 12 is the max for this computer, so there's no point upgrading your RAM. If you guys are looking for a replacement RAM stick, if that one goes bad, I'll have some replacement RAM options, eight gigabytes in that link below in the description. Your CMOS battery is right here underneath your solid state drive. So if you are here to replace that, it may be safer to remove your solid state drive. It's held in by a single screw right there, and then it pulls down out of this port and then you'll be able to easily or more easily access your CMOS battery. It just pops off, it's held down by double-sided tape so you can pop that off pretty easily and it plugs into the motherboard right there. If you're here to reset BIOS, you don't need to physically remove your battery, you can leave it down. You just need to unplug it for 15-20 seconds and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS system settings, but that's how you would access your CMOS battery. If you're trying to reset BIOS this way because you're trying to troubleshoot an issue with your computer not turning on, uh, there are several other steps, several other troubleshooting steps you may want to try. If your computer appears dead um, or it's not turning on, a BIOS reset is only one of them. So just to give you the full tutorial video on how to troubleshoot a computer not turning on, there'll be a link above also below in the description. I'll also include it as the end video when this video is over, showing you how to troubleshoot a computer not turning on. Your Wi-Fi card is right there, held down by a single screw on this side. So you're gonna undo that screw. That will release your Wi-Fi card. That screw was in there really good. Be aware, try not to strip it. Uh, after you do that, your Wi-Fi card is released so it can pull out of that port. However, you have your antenna wire here, and those are just snaps, guys, so those just, snap right off of the Wi-Fi card like that. If you're looking for the Wi-Fi specs and info, I'll have that below in the description, and I'll have a replacement Wi-Fi card option in that link that I told you about earlier as well. One last thing to remember here, guys, if you are having Wi-Fi issues, if your computer cannot find any available networks, it could be that your Wi-Fi card is bad and needs to be replaced, but it also could be something else. There are driver issues, software issues, update issues. There are other things that may be interfering. So just in case that's your issue, I'll put a link above, also below in the description. It'll be a tutorial video showing you how to troubleshoot and fix a computer that can't find any Wi-Fi networks. If those steps don't work, then you may wanna try replacing your Wi-Fi card. To put the Wi-Fi card back in, you simply slide it into its port. Then I'll screw it down to secure it. To snap those back on, they have to be at a perfect 90 degree angle. If you're not used to it, it, it could take a little time, uh, but I'm just gonna try to get it on top of it as well I can and snap it back down. Uh, if you don't have it at the right angle and you push too hard, you can damage it. Just be aware of that. So just really just go, go slow, be easy, and snap those back down. Your speakers are right here. There's one speaker here and one speaker over here. So the speakers are not actually screwed down. They're just held down over these posts. You can see that just wiggles off right like that. So you can get those off pretty easily. The wire runs down along here, links up to this one, and they plug into the motherboard underneath this ribbon cable right there. So just like your battery, there's a grip on either side. You can use a pry tool or your fingernails and just pull that port right out of the plug. Or I'm sorry, pull the plug <laughs> right out of the port like that. Then you can plug it back in there. And again, I'll try to have some replacement speakers in that link below in the description that I told you about. And I guess last thing to shout out about these speakers, guys, if you're having sound issues, if your sound's not working right, if it's too low, it may be an issue with your speakers or it may be a driver or an update issue. Before you go into your computer and try to mess with the speakers, there'll be a video link above, also below in the description, showing you how to make sure all your drivers are updated, uh, rule out any software, driver, system issues. However, if you are hearing that really nasty sound when your bass kicks in, um, sounds like your speakers are blown, then yeah, that's most likely your speakers, you need to replace them. This is your fan and your heatsink assembly here over your CPU. So to get the fan out, I'll take out these two screws. Now the fan releases independent of the heatsink assembly, but it does plug into the motherboard, so don't just rip it off. I'll set it aside here and it plugs into the motherboard right there. Just like the battery, there are grips on either side of that plug. So I can take my fingernails or a pry tool and push a little on each side until I wiggle that out. There we go. 
and then that comes out there. So that's your fan. I'll try to have a replacement fan option below in the description. If you're here because your computer is overheating or, or trying to clean it, you can access this fan now. Vacuum it out, blow it out really good, and that's how you access your fan. Your heat sink assembly is left here, so I'll go ahead and I'll remove these three screws. Again, if you're here to clean it out, now you can access your fan. There's a little bit of hair there. This computer is actually pretty clean. And that's what you're looking at there for, for the CPU. Now, because it's always a good idea, when you remove a heat sink, you always wanna reapply thermal paste now that air has gotten in there. Um, but actually, that's good for those of you that, that are here to do that anyway. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna take a rag right here. I'm gonna take an alcohol combination. I use a 70% isopropyl alcohol combination, and I'm gonna clean off all the old thermal paste from the CPU as well as my heat sink, get it all clean before I reapply thermal paste. Now that I have my CPU all clean, as well as my heat sink, I'll go ahead and I'll reapply thermal paste, but I won't apply too much. I'll show you how much thermal paste you want to apply. So I have my thermal paste out. I'm gonna put a little bit right in the center. And that's the max thermal paste you want to apply. After you press the heat sink down, it, it'll level it off. But if you put any more thermal paste than that, you risk having a reverse effect and actually trapping heat versus facilitating its transfer out. So now I'm gonna take my heat sink, place it down on top, nice and straight, give it a good press, and then I can go ahead and put my screws back in to my heat sink assembly. And honestly guys, that may have even been a little too much thermal paste. This heat sink is really small, uh, it, it literally just covers that chip. So if, if anything, put even a little less than I did on there. I'm so used to the larger heat sinks, but that may have even been a little too much, but that's how you would reattach your heat sink assembly. The other things I can shout out, this is your touchpad assembly here. This is your keyboard ribbon cable. Uh, this is your touchpad ribbon cable here. This is your USB ribbon cable here. One thing to know with all these kinds of ribbon cables, guys, these are very fragile and easy to break. So if, if you notice on all these ribbon cables, you have a port with a black clip on it. Same thing, a plug or a port with a black clip. This one's a little reversed, nothing's in it, but it's a plug with a white clip. All these ribbon cable connectors, including your keyboard, they're all the same. The way these work is you have a black, clip right there, it opens and shuts like a book cover. So it shuts down to hold the ribbon cable in place and then it pops up like a book cover to release it. So the way you operate this is you put a pry tool right there un underneath. This is actually a little too thick. I've used my metal one. Underneath right there and you pop it up like that. And then your ribbon cable can come out. And then you put the ribbon cable back in very gently, make sure that it's flat and, and secure and you press that down to secure it. If you break that black clip, you may not be able to find a replacement. That's why I say be very careful because if you do break it, your ribbon cable will never fully connect well again, which will be a problem. Uh, the last thing I'll shout out here is your LCD ribbon cable that come down through this hinge assembly. Same idea, you'll take your flat, flat pry tool, pop that end up, the ribbon cable will come out. It's kind of tight in there. And then to put it back in, make sure the ribbon cable connector's up, slide that in nice and flat, press that down to secure it. If you have any questions on this video, check out the FAQs in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer. But if you need to leave me a question or comment, I do try to get to those at least a couple times a day. Please remember to like and share if this video was helpful, if you think it can help someone else. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer tutorials. Thank you so much for watching guys, look forward to seeing you on my next video.